want to talk more about the impact of the bank turmoil on the economy. And joining us for that right now is Ian Shepherdson. He is the chief economist of Pantheon Macroeconomics. He's right here in studio with us. And Ian, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. I, I think it's kind of a, a, a no-duh statement to say, yeah, this brings us closer to the possibility of a recession. I guess the question is, how much closer? And what does the Fed do as a result? Yeah, this is a gazillion dollar question now. So I think what's really important is to appreciate that bank credit standards were tightening way before banks started to fail. So over the last year, you know, since the Fed really started raising rates aggressively, we've seen a clear tightening in lending standards. Uh, whether you're looking at it from the bank's perspective or the borrower's perspective, everyone's been saying, even before SVB failed, credit's becoming harder to get and more expensive. And so then just on, because the, cred, the Fed's intention yeah, is tightening. Yeah, absolutely. This is why you raise rates. You want to slow right. down the flow of credit. So then on top of that, you, you have bank failures, you have deposits running away from banks and going into money funds, and you have bank management thinking, OK, how do we survive this now? Well, we probably don't do it by, by lending. So my guess is what we're going to see over the next few months is a, a further ratcheting up of lending standards, so way more than we've already had. Uh, you know, as we all know, in, in a modern banking-driven developed economy, when the flow of credit is squeezed, you know, bad things happen to growth. So I'm getting really nervous now that an economy that I thought was going to dodge recession, just, is now at much greater risk of, of falling into one. And, you know, it could be quite severe because... Bank credit is the lifeblood for small businesses, and most people work for small businesses. They drive a huge amount of economic activity, and they're really going to struggle. So you're getting into a position where the only people who can get a loan are the people who don't actually need it because they have the money yeah. to this back is, it up. This is the definition of a credit crunch, is that right. you know, if, you, if you want it, you can't get it. If you need it for working capital, you, know, you want to carry inventory, you want to uh, hire people, you want to invest in equipment and software, well, no, you need to borrow money from the banks, and if that money's not there... Uh, economic activity suffers. So it's very early. At this point, we just don't know. And this is what I guess all these Fed speakers are saying, you know, we just don't know how bad it's going to be. But what worries me is that the starting point wasn't great. It's not like this comes out of a clear blue sky. We know we've been looking, I've been watching these loan surveys, these loan officer surveys from the Fed itself getting tighter and tighter and already getting kind of, you know, up to levels that normally are consistent with a pretty unpleasant situation for business borrowers. And then we get the bank failures on top. There, there was a pretty interesting statistic. One of these bank lending to commercial and industrial companies uh, that you were looking at, commercial real estate, that number actually jumped in the week after March 15th. And a lot of people would say, hey, that's a good sign. You say not so quickly. No, it's not. It's a classic sign of distress that, you know, when borrowers realize that credit is going to become more difficult to get, the first thing they do is grab whatever lines they've got available because they don't want to be calling the bank next week and the bank saying, sorry, that line's not yours anymore, or we're not going to renew it, or here's the new terms, which will be very onerous. So we saw this, you know, after Lehman failed in 08, and we saw it in the early stages of COVID, that we all knew that a really nasty credit crunch was coming, but actually the first thing that happened was that bank lending jumped, and it looked great, but it didn't last, and the reversal was way bigger than the jump. Uh, and so I think we're probably in that phase now. I think it'll last maybe a month or so. But my guess is later in the spring, we're going to see these lending numbers drop really pretty aggressively sharply. And that, that's a very bad sign for CapEx and hiring. Do you think the Fed is thinking the same thing you're thinking? I mean, and if that's the case, because, mm. look, there, there are still expectations. A lot of people, if you talk to them, expect that the Fed will hike rates again, maybe twice more, maybe three times more. But then in the market, it's also playing out that the Fed might actually cut rates, if you're yep. looking at the Fed futures, by June. Yeah, oh, no, I think that the, the June one seems unlikely to me, but I'm not ruling it out. The spread of opinion at the Fed, I think, is pretty wide. So, you know, now that we've had the meeting is out of the way, we're getting Fed speakers coming out. And, and the, the opinion is, is pretty clearly split. You know, Neil Kashkari has been very hawkish. And there he is yesterday talking about an increased risk of recession, whereas Jim Bullard is still very hawkish and talking about rates maybe going up to 5.5%. And no one in markets thinks that anymore. I mean, that was the view, but it isn't anymore. Yeah. Uh, and so the market's now pricing in no hike in May and then 75 basis points of easing by the end of the year. But, you know, listen to Chair Powell at the, at the meeting last week, and it's, no, we're not thinking about easing. They're dismissing it completely. So there's, there's a split within the Fed, but there's also quite a big rift now between markets and the Fed as well. And this will only be resolved by what the data tell us, but I'm increasingly leaning towards the idea that the data are going to tell us that actually they need to get their foot off the brake.